Much to the dismay of some advertising geniuses, fake commercials or mutant ads are popping up in this new wired world. These ads that are created by consumers and posted on social media are taking lots of pot shots at corporate brands. Leyland Pitt is a man of many university degrees. Currently, he is a professor of marketing at Simon Fraser University. He was part of a recent SFU study that looked at the impact internet mutant ads have on corporate branding. It is my pleasure to welcome Professor Leyland Pitt to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice I said a man of many degrees because I was, as I was reading through your uh, resume, Doctor of Philosophy, MBA in Marketing, taught at many different universities. Why here? What brought you here? I love the city and I love the school. That's why I'm here and I'm not going away. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope not because we have to talk at least for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, a mutant ad, what is it? I, I'm not sure where the term mutant came from. It wasn't one we created. I think it's one the, one the media created. Probably. But, but essentially, it, uh, uh, the, the, the way we understand these kinds of ads is ads that have been created not by companies or their advertising agencies, but by consumers. So um, people shoot their own movies and put them on media such mm -hmm. as YouTube. Sometimes they say nice things about the brand and sometimes they don't. How big an impact are they having presently? Okay, I, I, about 10% of the content on YouTube is advertising. And uh, our calculations are about 20% of that advertising is not ads created by companies, it's mm. ads created by individuals. So it's quite a, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing. And what are the rules around it? For instance, if you uh, put an ad together using uh, the Coca-Cola emblem and some of the Coca-Cola jingle, is that allowed? I think that's a very gray area at the moment. Um, a lot of companies are pretty much ignoring it uh, because I think they don't want to end up looking like bullies. Mm -hmm. uh, some have prosecuted. Um, I'm never sure how successfully that works. Um, others have just chosen to engage with it. Um, so, mm. uh, I, I'm sure many of the, the viewers would have seen the Dove campaign for real beauty. Yes. And um, uh, uh, there were an enormous amount of spoofs made of those, <laughs> of those ads. It's but, ripe but for spoof. Yeah, uh, but Dove mm -hmm. said, you know, it's a conversation around our brand, we want to be part of it. Right. And the more attention you get, why not? As they say, if your name gets in the paper, that's a good thing, but exactly. not always. Dove, I think, said we take mm -hmm. the we take the bad with the good and it's a conversation we can be part of but when you think of the amount of money mm -hmm. uh, major corporation uh, a Volkswagen you've worked with Volkswagen mm -hmm. or a Unilever or whatever puts on their brand mm -hmm. especially today who we are what we're really selling uh, can a few YouTube fake ads affect the brand oh, you bet there are there are quite a number of, of uh, of our ads out there that have directly affected um, brands. Um, one of the most recent ones was uh, uh, the, the Greenpeace campaign against Nestle's Kit Kat. Uh, Greenpeace really went for, for Nestle because uh, a, a lot of the products that Nestle makes contain palm oil. And mm. palm oil is mostly grown in Indonesia and Malaysia. Sure. Uh, it's a devastating plant to the environment. Um, Greenpeace accused uh, the palm oil producers of uh, devastating rainforest and uh, mm -hmm. uh, having an enormous Im impact on the orangutans, for example. Sure, or the hunter-gatherers, yeah. the, the uh, men and yeah. women who live in the tribes that's right. of, that's right. of Borneo yep. and in the woods. And that's they, right. that's, they live from the palm and yeah. all of that. And uh, it's funny they don't hit the car companies because some of the car companies, well, probably they, will. they have. They will. Oh, they mm -hmm. are already, in fact. Because they, yeah. they have the big boxes to ship the cars. That's right. <laughs> you know, and they yeah. cut the trees down yeah. for the wrong reasons. So, Not so, all car companies. That's right. And, and you know, just to, 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 to Nestle changed their palm oil procuring po policy mm. as a result of those ads. And how difficult is that for Nestle to uh, uh, respond in essence, who, mm -hmm. who believes Nestle, who believes uh, the mutant ads that yeah. say they're still doing it, they're mm -hmm. still doing mm -hmm. it? Uh, the, the truth is, people didn't believe Nestle initially, and Nestle didn't handle it very well initially. Uh, to their credit, eventually they came mm -hmm. through and said, we're changing things. Well, they must have had a, uh, 
a survey in the drugstore or the candy store that said Kit Kats are not selling as well as Kit Kats used to sell? Or did it go down oh, no, the no, chain they, like they got, that? They, they got the feedback a lot quicker than that. Uh, oh. What happened was somebody, uh, uh, well, Greenpeace originally put this ad onto YouTube. Uh, and Nestle asked that it be taken down, which they did. Right. Uh, but hundreds of consumers out there said, we're putting it back. And there was this tit for tat, mm. I'll put it mm -hmm. on, you take it off thing. Sure. And uh, then what happened is that Nestle has a fan page on Facebook, uh, which is a Kit Kat fan page, and it's intended for people who really like Kit Kat to share their stories with each other. Well, what happened was everybody got onto Facebook and started saying, what are you doing? What are you doing about these, uh, right. these palm oil things? And uh, unfortunately for Net Nestle, as I understand it, they had someone very junior, as I understand it. It was mm. an intern on a, on a holiday job handling the Facebook page. And this young woman got into a, a slanging match with the people who were putting on. So the whole thing just escalated. I'm sure, but with somebody so, from Cadbury or oh. Hershey, and believe me, I don't know who has palm oil and who doesn't, mm -hmm. but you would think it would be a ripe opportunity for another chocolate maker to say, but our chocolates make well, you run I think, faster. I think the thing is, most of them say there, but for the grace of God, go I. <laughs> exactly. And, and so they, 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 mm -hmm. they choose not to. Mm -hmm. uh, Starbucks. Mm. Who hasn't uh, been to a Starbucks somewhere in the world? Uh, this ad doesn't look terribly sophisticated, but it has some impact. Should we take a look? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I don't know anybody who doesn't love a frappuccino on a hot summer day. In fact, I heard that Starbucks was actually losing money because they simply couldn't make them fast enough. People want them that badly, and they're not cheap either. You could feed a kid in a refugee camp in Sudan for a whole week on what we spend on one grande mocha half-calf no whip frappuccino. A whole week. Seven days. Not that anybody's gonna skip the frosty treat to save a kid from starvation. I mean, come on, they're freaking delicious. Well, Starbucks would like the freaking delicious part, but there is <laughs> another there's message in, there. There's a sting yes, in the how tail. silly we yeah. are. And it's not necessarily just Starbucks. No. We spend a lot of money on designer coffee, so one message would be go back to espresso, mm -hmm. one shot. Yeah or enjoy your life mm -hmm. and think of another way to help the uh, refugees in, in many of the third world countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who put this together? Somebody called... Uh, Dave. Dave. Yeah, we interviewed Dave and we said, why did you do this? And, and he said, well, I, I, I'd read that Starbucks couldn't make their frosty drinks fast enough when we're actually losing money. And I thought this was ironic given the fact that these drinks are pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, he took it from there. Uh, the interesting thing about this, of course, is that Starbucks doesn't advertise on television. So here's a Starbucks ad on television uh, that was never created by Starbucks. I didn't even think yeah. about that, but you're right. Yeah. Starbucks advertises on every street corner, That's right. for yeah. sure, because they put, as you know, their, one of their plans was always to put a Starbucks on the right side of the street and one on the left side of the street. The corner of Robson. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is the ones. Kitty corner. That's right. Yes. What what other coffee company does that? Yeah, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. But the, that looked to me, and I couldn't tell for sure, like the real Starbucks logo. Yes, it was. So. Now, Starbucks, Starbucks chose to ignore that, and mm. I think that's to their credit. Um, what we were also very interested in was the response to the ad on YouTube, because as you know, people can comment. Of course, and there we were can. thousands of pages of comments on this. Mm. Some of whom loved the ad and said, isn't it a sad reflection on society that we spend so much on drinks and, 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 mm -hmm. and don't help poor people? And others who said, why are you gunning for Starbucks? They're actually a very responsible company, big on fair trade coffee, spend a lot of money in, developing world, in the developing world helping people. So okay. there was a huge controversy. Well, that's that, actually yeah. good, mm, I think, it because it makes people think. And it could be a car. It could be anything else. Yeah you know, that they're taking shots Correct. at, for sure, because yes. why are you buying a $200,000 car when you could drive a Volkswagen, That's right. <laughs> you know, a little Beetle? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so it makes us think. Yes. And that's okay. And yeah. it didn't say that it poisons you or no. does anything like that. No. What if it did say, let's take a break, and when we come back, if somebody sure. takes that kind mm -hmm. of shot mm -hmm. and says, if you drink too uh, many uh, Perrier waters, mm -hmm. uh, you could get cancer mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll come back.